Yes. You know, we kind of have our assigned seats in here. You I know. know. I keep moving. Yeah. Uh, well, that's because you have a comment. Yeah, last Sunday. Uh, yeah. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. I'm going to open a prayer. Judy Claire are here, and I get over there. Yeah, what? <laughs> you know, and we started over there, and I thought, Larry and Patty like to sit there. <laughs> <laughs> and Melissa got here, I guess. So okay. Let me change the sound. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. All right. Let's open a prayer. There's so much to go through. All right. Father, thank you so much for this morning. I just pray that uh, we would just... Uh, be able to apply just simply what we know. If we could just do what we know, Lord, we would uh, be so much more like Christ. And I pray that uh, as Paul's purpose was to present every man complete in Christ, that we would do the same and that we would make sure that we uh, are obeying and, and, and following you and fulfilling your purpose in our lives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Okay. Was it a lot of homework? Okay. <laughs> Why? I told you guys I was so glad we did that on um, spring break. I'm like, I'm so glad I started. Right? I was like, wait, how thick is this? How many cross references can we have? But that's why I say this was rich, but I we have a lot. And I probably won't get off through all of it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just you know, that's so my goal. So but, we're saved, huh? But it's probably not going to happen. Um, this is review. Kay is going to give you like maybe two or three different ways to outline the book. So, you know, you can pick from that. We know the author is Paul. We know the recipients are the Colossians. But how did they get it? Via a And this is someone taking the papyrus. No. No. No, it wasn't taken to them by that. That's right. It was delivered to them by Onesimus and Tychicus. Yeah. Right, Tychicus. Yeah. How did they even hear the gospel in the first place? That's a hard thing, actually. It is. It is. They think it was Epaphras because Epaphras brings such a report back to Paul and who else? Timothy. Timothy. And the other guys that are there, they're going to take the left. Okay, now. Most scholars, though, believe that it was actually Paul. That? That delivered the gospel to them originally. Oh, and they oh, really? backed it up from the book. From his uh -huh. missionary journeys as well. And track yes, it. knowing that he traveled that area so many times and hit all of the main... And truthfully, they could have heard it, but it seems like Epaphras is the one that was... Uh, like ministry. Billy Graham comes in, yes. hears it, and then he leaves, and everybody's assigned to a different yeah. church. Yeah. Uh, that's yes. kind of what I'm thinking of Epaphras in... That he's the one that stayed and grounded on. Right. And then brought the report back to Paul about their love, their faith, their steadfastness, and all that kind of stuff. Now, how do we know that these people are Gentiles? We know that they're what? Gentiles. Probably not Fifth. Jews. Fifth. Uh, the verse says that they were formerly aliens. Aliens. Yeah. And Jews are never called aliens. Aliens, no. So we, this is mainly a Gentile congregation. Uh, we, again, we said 6062. Mm -hmm. Warning, don't be deluded or taken captive by false teaching. What's one of the false teachings that we know is happening here? Gnosticism. Gnosticism, yeah. And it's, uh, I think she said it's not in full bloom, but it's getting its seeds planted now. Uh, instructions how to live as believers. Boy, did we get those. Mm -hmm. um, we never settled on a purpose. Anybody come up with uh, a purpose for the book? Yes, I did. What did I write? Because mine had just been blank for a while. So I was like, well, this could be it. Lesson one notes. Um, authors were to be under shepherds, responsible for the care mm -hmm. of the flock God had placed underneath them. Their letters were part of the shepherd. That's well, what Yes, isn't that wasn't that great on the DVD? How she talked about the rod and how they pass under the yes. rod. And yeah. It's like man, that gave me a big, huge visual. Um, Paul's purpose for every man, every believer, every congregation was to present them complete in Christ. Right. But the Book of Colossians is the one that really narrows down how to be complete in Christ. Um, and it's not really, it's 
It's not a phrase complete in Christ in much of the other books. Uh, we're whole, we're saved, we're sanctified, things like that, but not complete. Okay? This is going to be um, a key word complete in Colossians. Okay? I think that's also going to come about in different um, teachings that are going to come in. Okay? Because remember, if you have Gnosticism and you have Gentile believers, you also have what other kind of believers? Jewish. You're going to have Jewish believers, and they're going to want to bring in what? They were bringing in the law. Right. That's one of the problems. Also. Okay. Can you can be complete without the law? Mm. No. Well, they're going to say no. They're going to say no. Right. Absolutely not. Right. You <laughs> have to go here and do this, do this, do this. You, you have know, to do, 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 do. All these rituals. Jesus did all that. That Jesus did That's all that. Done. Which is why you're complete in Christ. You don't need a plus. Okay? All right. Colossians 1. Uh, let's just read verses 1 to 8. Because there's 29 verses. I hope I get through them all. <laughs> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you, just as in all the world also, it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing, even as it has been doing in you also, since the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow bondservant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on our behalf, and he also informed us of your love in the spirit. Now see, we can look up that word learned. Does that mean they heard it first from him or they got grounded in it from the Epaphras? Because Paul is saying Epaphras did it. Have to look up the word learned. See what that means. Okay? Um, so this chapter begins with Paul and Timothy. Okay? Then it goes to the Colossian saints. Then the church is described as faithful. Again, as a inductive studier, I'm like, so if Paul visited my church, if Epaphras visited my church, would he come away and say, they are such faithful people. They are loved, devoted people to the body of Christ, to whatever. That is always the goal of the church. That would be the goal, whoever visited. One visit, that they would go and they would leave and go, wow, these people are on fire for Christ, they're faithful, they're, they love everybody, they're so welcoming, they're so warm, whatever. I want to come back, right? That's the goal. Um, why would he mention thankfulness? Why do they need to be thankful? I think he's always been appreciative of any person that came to Christ because that's his whole goal. That's his whole goal. That's his whole goal. He's thankful for the saints that he's never met. Yeah. He's never even met them. And that they're faithful. Right. So see, that's why I'm like, that's what scholars say, but he says he's never met them. Yeah. He's never seen, though you've never seen me face to face. It's but nice. he's heard about them and what they've been doing. Don't you want that to be you? Don't you want, have you heard about, have you heard about, and not bad way, yeah. <laughs> good way, okay? <laughs> Finally, they're, they're faithful. They love all the saints instead of, well, they like this group, but this group's like, mm -mm. they're not welcoming to, mm -mm. Because their doctrines are little. Oh, they love all the saints. Now, you got to think about that. <coughs> there are probably people in this congregation that are headed towards Gnosticism. Because, you know, that just makes sense. Especially if you're a very intelligent person in Colossae, Gnosticism would be very appealing because it would elevate you totally. Because of everybody else. 
Hmm? Because it's easy. And because you check off, right? Mm -hmm. um, Judaizers are in here. Mm -hmm. Gentile believers who are, we're aliens, strangers. I mean, scum of the earth, as far as Jews were concerned. But now they're welcoming the church. This church says they love all the saints. That's, I want that to be said. I, I want that to be a characteristic. Epaphras knew they loved all the saints. Now, they had been increasing and bearing fruit not a few years after they knew Christ. Since. Since the day they heard it. Constantly. Wow. There is no question whether these people were saved or not. You could look at them and go, they aren't what they used to be before. They are bearing fruit since the day they heard it. Now, could you say that about Paul? Mm. <laughs> Even in prison. <laughs> right? Right? Okay. Christ saved him, and then he took him out of circulation, shall we say? Yeah. For how long? Three, Three years. years. Three years. Paul can't say that about himself. No. He had three years of on the shelf. Oh, uh-huh. Three years. Now, of course, Christ himself was teaching him. Right. So that's a pretty good shelf. Yeah. Right? But he's not bearing fruit. Oh, but what he's going to reap it. Right? Was, <laughs> right? But he, he had to be in. And so he was in the process of right. being He free. had to be attached to that branch in order exactly. to be free. Yeah. Okay? Um, all right, here's another outline. Um, zooming on. Um, for this reason, what reason? Love in the Spirit. Yeah, okay, because they had love. love right. Everything he'd said about them up there. The because of that. Of the also, here's that phrase again. Yeah. Since the day we heard of it, uh, heard of what? Their love. Their Their love. Their love. Right. Their love is <clears throat> we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Okay, let's, let's camp there for just a minute. This is the prayer. Now, who, who they hear it from? Paul and Timothy heard it from Epaphras. Since the day they heard of that, they've been praying for them to have all spiritual wisdom and knowledge. Now, in understanding, why would they pray that for them since the day they heard of their... They're doing great. Because they know the area. They know about the Gnosticism, and this is the direct countermand. Is this not like a parent? They are doing so good that this is coming. Why do you know that's coming? Because I was a kid. Very insulting. And they're done that, and this is what you're going to... And you may be better at it than I was. Isn't that what they're praying for? Yeah. Peer pressure, right? Who does see Satan target but someone that? I mean, look look at the people that have fallen in our world. Mm. Oh, Lots yeah. of them have been pretty high yes, up they have. in the Christianity. Yes, hierarchy. they have, and you think they, they're not able to, but they are. And this maybe is, that's what they thought. Too. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And again, the Gnosticism is coming in, mm. and the Judaizers, and the church is brand new. I mean, the, it, he calls it a mystery. This is brand new, this concept. There is nothing in the Old Testament like it at all. Nothing. Grace is not there. Grace is all over the New Testament, and that is the church, the mystery not revealed until now. So you're like, how wrong could they go? Pretty wrong. They could go off on this tangent and this tangent. They, they could just... And it would be totally ruined. The church would be ruined. So, all spiritual wisdom and knowledge. Now, we looked up knowledge. So, what did you get when you looked up knowledge? Yeah. Well, this was the 1922 knowledge. Because, <laughs> so, you know, we right. have a The number, right, right. The Strong's number, 1922. <laughs> so, this was the experiential knowing, the full knowledge. Okay. Expresses a, a, mere, a more thorough participation by whom? 
by us. Right, yes. by the learner. We want to, it's not, let me open my daily devotion and I look in here and now I close it and I haven't dug, I haven't dug into the scripture. So I kind of know, but I don't know because I haven't, I haven't done the hard work. Right. Put it that way. Yeah. Okay? Right. This is like a chemistry partner. <laughs> it comes in and who's doing all the labs? Who gets all the credit too? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not fair. Life's not fair. That's, that's the way life is. <laughs> yeah. um, did they learn? Well, sort of, kind of. Did they get the grade? Yeah. Do they know like I do? No, they do not. Because they didn't do the work. I'd rather know. Okay? I'd rather, because now when the test comes, of course, because I was all about tests, you've got to get the grade. And then we're done. Check. Remember. Nope. Great. Check. Passed. Now this one is going to be watching, but will they remember, was it this test tube or that tube she poured in? Well, if you did it, you're going to really know what you did, and that's probably not going to forget about that. Right. When you dig out a truth for yourself from Scripture, very rare you forget it. Because it came with hard work. It came with lots of wrestling back and forth. But especially if, but I always grew up thinking, but now that you dug it out for yourself, it's not that. Okay, are you going to own it? Because you had to wrestle, was this right or was this right? And then once you've wrestled, you don't go back to that because you proved it wasn't right. So you own it. Now, I love this, knowledge laying claim to personal involvement. I just love that phrase. Okay, you looked up wisdom. Because again, his prayer is that they would be all spiritual knowledge and wisdom. So if we get Sophia, what does that mean? Why, skill, tech, expertise, and yeah. Expertise, I love that. Deep understanding. Okay. If you have knowledge without wisdom, what do you do? Mm. You have knowledge. You have knowledge. Yeah. You just know a bunch of stuff. Right? You just know a bunch of stuff. <laughs> right. And it has benefited you. you. Zip. Well, you could go on Jeopardy. Yeah. There you go. You could <laughs> put a lot of money on Jeopardy. There you go. Being yeah. right. With a lot of money. Wisdom is putting that knowledge into practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the, I, I term it scary because now that you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? Because now you're responsible because you know. Now we know in that whole list in Second Peter of what you're supposed to add to our lives, right? So we would never stumble. Never stumble. So have you thought about that list lately? No, I'm wrapped up in Colossians. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> but I know what I'm supposed to do because according to Second Peter I'm supposed to right, supply my faith with. And but I haven't gone back. I got to think of the, one of the words in, in one of the definitions are is broad and full of intelligence. Broad. So I got to thinking about that and, and wisdom is a, an ability to, to connect your knowledge Oh, yeah. I know about this and I know about this and how do these interact? Right. And the relationships between things and you know, if this happens it's going to cause a reaction right. to this and how is that going to affect that? Right. And to and to me that's always kind of the wisdom thing is beyond this fact. Mm -hmm. How does that umbrella out? Mhm. Mm or mushroom uh, out. Mushroom out, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> out of that mushroom <laughs> out. Because it, it, it will. Yes. Right? Everything um, affects something else. Yes. Yes. Now, I have to share you with an, an acclamation. When we would go to a church, a pastor would say, okay, now do you want to move this, this, this? I, I don't know. Ask them. <laughs> um, what's it going to look like? Or is that going to be in our way when we... I, I don't do that. When does that? Because that's connecting that A to B to D because it ends up in Z. 
That's a talent. How do you do that with scripture? Because again, this is the prayer from Paul that they grow up, right? He doesn't say grow up, but he says that they would be filled with the knowledge of all spiritual wisdom and understanding. <sighs> all is just all, all through here, okay? Understanding is a mental putting together, just like Lynn was saying, connecting it, okay? Reason out the ability to understand concepts and see relationships between them. That's the understanding. The wisdom is putting the knowledge into practice in the proper way. Okay? Um, why will they need that? How could you pray that for someone else? Or for yourself? I don't think you can live a Christian life without getting that understanding in Agreed. there. Because you think of all the words that we use that the world doesn't know. Shepherd, sheep, etc. Right. Sheeple. Right. Sheeple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Justification, glorification, redemption, sanctification. sanctification. They don't know what those mean. Right. Do the do your fellow pew members know what they mean? Hopefully. Mm. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not a guarantee. Okay. Um, if you say, uh, I'm saved once and done. <laughs> Is that right? No. Say what? Well, that's once department. and done. Oh, once I'm done. saved. Once and done. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes and. 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 That's the first part. <laughs> yes and. You need to add a little fertilizer yeah. to it. Uh, there you go. Exactly. I walked the aisle. I said I'm saved. I got baptized. Check. Now there's where our understanding is not being applied to not applied to the knowledge <coughs> of wisdom right. at all. But how many of us were taught that? Yeah, I, think I, I was totally taught that. And then I questioned my fellow believers of why? How come they can do that? And I feel like so bad if I do that. Why is that? So many questions. So many I don't understand. I don't if that's okay for them, how come I, how come that's not okay for me? I know I can't, but I just I can't. But it's okay for them that they're a Christian, are they? I thought they said they were, and they walked just like I did. They checked the box just like I did. Such confusion is in there. This is a brand new church. Jenny, that was one of the hardest things. I was brought up in the Assembly of God Church, therefore you can lose your salvation. Now it's up and down, and it's not up and down and up and down like some people think. But when I first came to this church, which is many years ago, mm -hmm. you walked the aisle, you were saved. Right. You know? And I, I had such a hard time. And Mark loaned me a, a book that explained it, thankfully, because it was a big question in my mind. And even some things come up in the scripture that make it sound. <coughs> and yes, that's probably where they get it. But you have to take the whole scripture, precept upon precept. There's one in here, I think. There is. There is. Um, I think it's in Romans. We'll see. But, you know, again, where do I get my counsel? Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's where I'm supposed to get it. He's all you need for life. But how come I don't run there for Because you? <coughs> you're not growing in the Lord. Right. Yeah. And then sometimes I don't apply the wisdom to the knowledge that I know mm -hmm. that I should go there first, but I don't. <coughs> and because sometimes you want something tangible. Mm -hmm. I want to touch it. All the time. Yeah. You know, something as a teacher was that most of my students that grew up in Christian households were better students, and I was always kind of back and forth, is it because they grew up with parent involvement, but I had others that weren't Christians that had parent involvement, <clears throat> but also growing up learning the Bible and learning how to learn the Bible also teaches so many things necessary for wisdom and understanding Doesn't of it? any concept. So and it, kind of, it was something that I always kind of, you know, I still don't know, but I always kind of wondered, nobody's ever done a study on it, I've searched it, but like... You know, by teaching, you know, growing up learning the Bible, or is it that all wisdom comes from God and the Christian students are getting more wisdom from God so they're doing better in classes? Not always. There are definitely Christians that struggle in classes, and it doesn't mean it's guaranteed. But it, it, there was normally a trend that most kids that grew up in a good Christian home were Christians that were living a life. Well, think did about in something, uh, at least in, in my home and in the home I, when my mom and dad, do everything is unto the Lord. Do everything is unto the Lord. Who, to whom much is given, much is required. If I'm going to do my homework as unto the Lord, 
then I gotta do my homework. Yeah. And I gotta hand it in, and it's gotta be legible, at least. I have to have put forth an effort. I have a different standard to meet. Um, I, I know my homeschool kids are better at college, typically, because they're used to the self-paced study, and only a class once a week, maybe twice a week, instead of every single day. So that accountability, they're kind of used to having to pace themselves, but most kids that are just every day at math, 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 and it's like, oh, I have math Tuesday, and I'll have to have it due again until next Tuesday, and then Monday night, <gasps> you know, and so, right. So it's a, I think it's, it's something that, again, is grounded in the home and kind of carries over to that. I wonder if something to do with the wisdom of God, too, though. It has like, to be. Because, like, I, I mean, God created history, God wrote history, yeah. so it's when you're story. taking history classes, you're, it's fine. You know, like, everything kind of goes back to God, because God created science. For, created. for me, learning history and putting it with the word mm -hmm. made history make sense. Well, see, I went to public school where we didn't put it with the word, no, but it's didn't. still right. like reading the Bible and growing up studying the Bible and then learning history, the understanding and the wisdom yes. that was there was yeah. something that a lot of kids didn't have the depth mm -hmm. of. Too. And that's true. Controversially, sorry. <laughs> I have a, I, I, the thing that's always scared me working with you is when I have a group full of church kids who have been friends since the bed babies. Yes. Yes. You know, and I, I've known that I've, they've heard everything for so long, and they they know all of the answers, and that always scares me the it most. Should. Yeah. It should. It should. That has always it. scared me because it's like I see. It's kind of rote. It is. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> and it's just like a it's a knowledge that they have. It's not a wisdom that they have. Yeah. It's not. It's and their parents have always given them facts. I would you encourage know. you in there to be the devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because. Yeah. The, that's true. Sometimes yeah. my kids would look at me and go, stir them up. I, well, why? 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 Yeah. why is that? Or how do you know that's right? I don't think that's right. Yeah. I grew up in I grew up in yeah. church and I was like that. But I had a teacher my junior year in high school that was an a AP history teacher, U.S. history, and he challenged my beliefs. And he would he would point me out, and I thought he was like the devil. I mean, I thought he was like the atheist, <laughs> the most was. horrible. But, but you're I was more and now. I would do my research, and I I gained so much wisdom, understanding, and learned so much about my beliefs because. I didn't want to let him get the best of me, so I'd go right. home and do my research and everything and have stuff come back. Turns out at the end of the semester, the last day of school, he called me up and he actually told me he was a Christian and he's worried about the strong Christians that have the answers going off to college. There you go. No, and no. I like everybody. So as you study the lesson, go, and how can I be though? The devil's advocate that's about me. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Okay. Uh, 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 I to let them know my yeah. humanity. How can you know all things spiritual? Can you know all things spiritual? Strive. I mean, that's what Paul's prayer was. Drive. It's yeah. available to us, but because we are still <coughs> sinful, mm -hmm. and that we are in a, still living in a sinful world, right. Right. We will, it will not all come to fruition until we are perfectly... Which is called glorification. glorification. When we get glorified, <coughs> we will know all things spiritual. Yeah, but, right. but can you still pray that for somebody? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Last night I heard a testimony in, in Bible study. The guy was leading the Bible study had actually gone to prison, and uh, he said <clears throat> that he he became a Christian before going, and he knew a guy that, that he'd been friends with who was a bookie. And he said the bookies get this information from Vegas. I mean, you get magazines, got all kind of information about players and everything, so you know all the dirt, you know what the weaknesses are, and everything. So when you start placing your bets. You got a lot of information on how to place the best. So, <clears throat> so Mike was talking with, you know, was communicating with this guy, and the guy said, <clears throat> I'm taking, so I have a Bible. So I'm taking the Bible, and I'm putting the same effort into the Bible that I used to put into all these magazines that I was getting about how to bet. Right. <clears throat> so so he, he's put his discipline someplace else. So he put yeah. his, so he went all the way on the Bible as far as <coughs> what he had. <clears throat> I learned, like I said, he put his discipline in that. Mike said, because this guy's doing this, maybe I should too. They, right? <laughs> Gnostics will say you can't. You can't know all things spiritual. What are some of their arguments that they would say? Because it's secret. It's secret. You have to be spiritual enough to reach the You have to be spiritual enough to reach the attainment of that type of knowledge and 
you're not it. Like well, Gnostics also don't want right. everyone to know all. No. And why? that is not exclusive to them. There America. you go. That it's not exclusive. And they okay. control people. It's right. all about power and control. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How many different yes. religions in history have there, it's been about power and control and not sharing the knowledge? So, just like Shannon had that in, in school, she can know when man's counsel goes against God's wisdom. Yeah. Okay? It's obvious. Wisdom enables you to act on that knowledge. Yep. Now, <clears throat> verse 10, the result of Paul's prayer. Ooh. I want this. <laughs> I want that result. Okay, so that, that's a key phrase. That's almost like a because. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Conclusion. You will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work. Here we go. And increasing in the knowledge of God, which you already prayed for. Even that could be the purpose of Colossians. That could be the purpose. Yeah. Right? Bearing fruit. Because it adds that. Bearing fruit. Growing in the knowledge of the Lord. Worthy of Christ. Yep. Bearing fruit. Yes. And in so doing, you would be complete. Because if you mm -hmm. recognize nothing's happening in my life right now, I am not bearing fruit. And you know you should be. What a great indicator. Right. You fall on your knees and go, What's, where do I need to but be? But that would be requiring someone to actually always take self-inventory. <coughs> always take yep. self-inventory. Which is where we should be. I mean, Larry can do that for me. <laughs> yeah. It won't work. But I know. <laughs> well, Larry, that's not what God, I get in trouble. That's not what God requires. Uh -huh. God get requires me. Yes. Right, right. Oh, I went over um, how about home. page 17? I think it's page 17. Mm -hmm. it might be 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Oh, uh, 19 is Romans 12. Yes. Okay. We know that. Mm -hmm. I, I beseech you, their brethren, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, to present yourself a living sacrifice unto God, a holy mm -hmm. sacrifice, which is your reasonable act of worship. Mm -hmm. Okay? And be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind yeah. so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. Okay? Spirit, God's spirit and his word renews your mind. <laughs> well, that's full knowledge and wisdom right there. And what does Satan offer? Right. Diddly squat. Diddly squat. He's got nothing compared to... What so I, I, and I also look, I'm like, okay, if I'm supposed to prove the will of God... What does that mean? I'm like getting in, I put a little fleece out here, and you say, make that wet, and make that dry, and now tomorrow, make that dry, make that wet. That's not what that means. It means trying to learn. Mm -hmm. So how do you try to learn the will of God? Only His Word. Mm -hmm. And again, when you come up against that block, you're like, Okay, well, maybe I'm not having, uh, maybe I'm thinking that this is what you want me to do, and this is not what you want me to do. So let me step back and see what you do. Maybe I'm trying to do something in my own power, and just, that's why it's not working. Okay, so step back. But again, this is acknowledgement of the spiritual realm in your life rather than just living your life. I can do it. Okay, I can do it myself. <laughs> Um, you had cross references on fruit, bearing fruit in every good work. Now, for some reason, the Lord just kind of put this in my head. So, go we got fruit. Just go with it. <laughs> um, an orange is a fruit, right? We're with you. Yeah. Um, this is the completed fruit. We love this completed fruit. When um, somebody has an orange, um, do you know it right away? You smell, smell it. it. Smell it. See it. Uh, not until, until, until I peel it. Peel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I peel it, mm -hmm. then what happens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The aroma goes down. Everybody knows I have an orange. Does it taste good? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Depends. Don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> That's up to me. You yeah. may get a piece, you may not. Mm -hmm. um, but what have I done to the peeling so that you know that there's a fruit? <clears throat> It's been torn and stripped away. It's been torn and it's been stripped away. How does it start out? Flower. Oh. As a flower. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very fragile, oh, very tree. delicate, lasts very short, and falls off and dies. Mm -hmm. 
what has to come to it before it becomes this? Pollen. Um, Rain. Seed, so pollinate. Uh, has to pollinate. Or wind <laughs> has to pollinate it. Okay? Do I know that anything's happened? No. Not until you see not just you little baby, on it. The little baby green <laughs> little, little baby green bud should be there when the flower falls off. Right. Should be there. If it hasn't been pollinated, will there be a little baby no. green? No. 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 Flowers fall off instead. Okay? This is kind of like the parable of the fruit, of the, when it wow. puts the seed, okay? Well, the seed, that's what, that's like what that. me with that, because what the whole point of fruit is to spread the seeds. The animals eat the fruit, they, you know, yeah, spread, continue yeah, on. which that's plants so more. So that's a, that, was, that was the first time I've ever actually put that connection when I was doing this. Mm -hmm. This little bee of a green thing, is it good to eat? Oh, oh no. no. It is very bitter, bitter, it is nasty. And it's this big. It sticks in your teeth. It's right? <laughs> I love that you're so trying to eat it. It, is <laughs> it is not ripe. Is it ripe the next day? No. The next day? No. Or the next day or the next day or the next day. Next day, next day. No. Yes. How long does it take? Falls six months? I don't know. I don't know. About six months. Yeah. Does it really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because from the flower, because we love to go to Bach Tower and go. <sighs> Orange blossoms. Yeah. Now Lynn would go. Ah, shah, shah, shah. <laughs> <laughs> I we stop love take, the smell. I stop and take pictures. There you go. Up uh, <laughs> the grove I drive past. Because <laughs> it's, it's full of oranges and it's full of blossoms. Oh, yeah. and yeah. It, there's nothing that smells like that, is there? No. By itself, it's not as fragrant, is it? Yeah. But if there's a field of them, oh, it just smells so good. But it's short-lived. Mm. It's gone. Is there fruit there? I don't know. I'd have to go check every single flower to see what was there, okay? We love oranges. We love the completed fruit, but it doesn't start out like that. It starts out with this very fragile thing that could just blow away, not be pollinated. It had a really good smell. Gone. And it pleased everybody, except for those allergic to it. When you get into it, it's got segments also. Yes, we all have all, segments so of our life. So we could share it mm -hmm. if we wanted to. If we're good sharers, <laughs> but we're, we're not going to go there. If we do what we're told, right? Okay. We'll Think nervous. about that, um, <coughs> because I always, and I hope you got this in your homework. I always thought fruit was bringing people to Christ. That is not what fruit is. I always, mm -hmm. always. Always mm -hmm. thought fruit is bringing people to Christ, and it's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. If you looked up your cross references, mm -hmm. it's not that at all. We bear fruit in every good work. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you do a good work, you just plucked yourself an orange. <laughs> you create a wonderful fragrance to Father. Never, never knew that. When I was at my mom's yesterday, hanging this back up, putting things that back up for my dad's memorial dinner, that, that was good fruit. I didn't know that. I'm not an evangelist like Billy Graham. Boy, he was fruit. No. That was his fruit. You do a good work. You serve other people. You're bearing fruit. We need to hear that. I, I need kids to hear that. Look, when you go serve your parent, you go serve whatever, you go serve in the nursery, you go, you take a kid to potty. Mm -hmm. That's good fruit. I never knew that. I thought I had to win somebody to the Lord to have good fruit. That is, that's a lie from Satan to put guilt on you. Is that why and Jesus, he's really good at it. Is that, yes. is that what Jesus said when you visit some, someone in prison, when you... Okay? You've you done it unto me. But there's nothing, there's no mention about fruit. So I never connected that with fruit. Because I'm not fruit. It is fruit. I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was sick, you took care of me. When I was in prison, you... That's fruit. I grew up knowing good works was fruit because in my mind, when I think fruit, I think the fruit of the Spirit is. That's character. That's who you are. That's what I've always seen as fruit is the character. This was the first time I saw it as the seed. Isn't because that the seeds are in the fruit, and ah. that plants the. So when you bear these fruits and do these things, even when you don't realize that you're planting seeds, mm -hmm. you're planting seeds because somebody will eat the fruit That's and it. it passes through it and it turns into a new. You know, but you're that right, was my first time doing that. One. In you. I mean, that's if you have God's yes. character in you, you uh, it creates the world. You can't help it. That's, that's right. right. And bearing fruit is revealing. 
the attributes of God. Right. There it is. Yeah. In, the in your, in your cross references in Matthew 3 and 7, it said, Jesus said to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Yeah. What does that mean? If you're once and done walk the aisle, I'm saved. No, I think that means your your good works that are bearing fruit are those that are revealing God to others. Right. That are planting those seeds. Right. That even when you don't realize it. That's even when you don't realize it. You don't even necessarily so, realize you know, that's what's happening. Not everything you do, even if it was good, is necessarily bearing fruit. Exactly. No. Exactly. Yeah. It's the motivation behind it. Yeah. Okay. It's the That's, evidence of that repentance and turn. Right, right, right. Again, you should be able to look at people's lives and know they're growing. You should be able to look at your life and know I'm growing. I'm not this little tiny green little thing that's growing and it hasn't really become a fruit yet, but I'm not the flower that fell off and didn't get pollinated. I am growing up into my completed fruit. Okay? The one who repents will bear fruit, period. <laughs> the evidence of salvation is that change transformed mind from Romans, okay? We don't think about things like we used to think like that anymore. A whole lot of condemnation goes out the window towards other people, shall I say. Hopefully towards yourself. <coughs> that condemnation goes out. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. None. Zero. Don't condemn yourself. Okay? Good fruit is doing the will of the Father. I I thought bearing fruit is bringing somebody else to Jesus Christ. That's how I bear. But no, no, that's part of it. It could be part of it. But there's so many other ways to bear fruit. Yeah. Think how many fruits there are. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Some we like, some we don't really like so much. Okay. And the thing is, the will of the Father, you can't encapsulate that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Which, which is what I also loved about his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Because if we did know the will of the Father, we wouldn't be here. Because? Because, it would, because he had already said, he, the Christ had already come, the earth, earth, earth was destroyed. Because we don't know, we know the end game, mm. but we don't know the days and what's going to happen between now and the coming of Jesus. And how he's going to fulfill all of that. We know it's going to happen. We believe it. Because we see his promise being lived out, open to us, is, more day to day. Is part of that will the peeling away of that? Oh, I, yeah. But that hurts. It does hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that part. I, this is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Once you peel the peeling, it's not so beautiful. But what's inside? Oh, this is good. Oh, can, can this even help me unless I peel it? No, no, no. no. Sure is good. No, it's good. It's going to eventually rot. Burn your lips. It's going to get and it will eventually rot mm-hmm. if you don't throw it away and eat it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting when I was reading it that it just brought to mind why it was fruit instead of vegetables. And with vegetables, vegetables are the seeds, right? And vegetables can just fall off the tree or the what vine or whatever. And produce and themselves and produce again. More. Where fruit requires being eaten cultivated. or cultivated or something to produce Good more. Point. I thought that was really interesting. And plus fruit is pleasing to the eye. Pleasing, it, it's pleasing. It's it smell good. It's it's sweet. It's a, you know, where vegetables... Not so much. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway, I thought it was interesting that like vegetables are the seeds that can just fall. This isn't the seeds that can fall. This has to have something done to right? it to produce right? seeds. Col- I mean, my grandfather grew up um, cultivating the orange groves, uh, mostly with pesticides. Mm-hmm. That was my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Um, but he knew every sort of orange, every kind there was, and what tree it was, and where it grew, and why it didn't grow, and this is good, and this is bad. And he knew all of that because that was his life. Um, but this doesn't benefit me at all unless the peeling is away and unless I choose to peel it and unless I choose to eat it or share it okay think, think about that in your bearing fruit some of it's not going to be real pleasant it is going to be a good work. <laughs> what? We stick the rotten ones and have wars with our neighbors. <laughs> See? <laughs> There's still a use for the rotten ones. I just um, want to clarify my statement. We do know the will of God. It's that no one should perish. But that well, yes, that part. 
But how is he going to execute his will in me That's it. today? That's it. That's like, I don't know how, but I'm, right. I'm either going to be ready or I'm not. Or I'm going to rebel against it. Exactly. And that doesn't go anywhere good yeah. either. No. Um, but I have definitely rebelled against it. I, I tell you that for certain. I don't like it. I'm not doing it. You go pick on somebody else. I'm not doing it. Uh, well, I will eventually do it. Because <laughs> that's the will of God. And this is what I will do. Um, and I eventually learn mm -hmm. to like it. Okay? Now, false prophets. Christ said they're going to be recognized by their bad fruit. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what good fruit is mm -hmm. to know what bad fruit is. Mm -hmm. I think it's that's pretty. We can't do bad fruit. Like if we're if we're, if we're if we're a good tree, we can't give bad fruit. Like that. Right. That's really comforting to me. Isn't so it? Maybe I screw up more than the rest of them. Because good fruit that makes me a good feel tree, better. whatever, cannot produce. And always say it's bad. Like the yeah. Bitter oranges. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, Matthew twenty-one. <coughs> that was. That was the short one. Nineteen. <laughs> 19. Still nineteen. Um, because. Those Jews did not produce fruit. Look what happened to them. I mean, we're blessed because of that. We're, we're Gentile, totally blessed because of that. Yes. But the kingdom was taken away from them and given to the church, which is us, but only for a time. We get it for a time. It seems like to us we've had it forever. It seems like it, but we haven't. Okay, they had it still longer than we did, not the church but God's relationship with them. Luke. Those who believe God's word when they hear it produce fruit. Mm. Now, does that mean they win other people to Christ? No, it doesn't. What does it mean? <laughs> they do good work by sharing. They do good works by sharing. Their, their lives are changed. They are living in accordance with that repentant life. I hold fast to it. They hold fast to it, okay? They, it can't be torn from their hand. They persevere. And they persevere. That's a huge fruit right there, mm -hmm. persevering. Mm -hmm. But remember that there's no fruit. Mm -hmm. There's no true life. Mm -hmm. Fruit in this context comes with perseverance and patience. So can perseverance and patience be a fruit? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Right? Sometimes that's all you can do is persevere to get through whatever it is. And wait. And wait for the perfect will of the Father. Okay? Um, Luke 8, 12. These hearers had not been saved. Now, I just wanted to go on. I wanted to read that verse because sometimes when I read those, I'm like, I don't get this parable. This parable is so confusing. But when I look at it as bearing fruit or the fruit being the word of God, it's not so confusing anymore. Yeah. Right. Once you identify what it is, yes. you can continue that it. With the metaphor that he's exactly. trying to, then I, then I get it. Yes. Um, those beside the roadside are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they will not believe and be saved. Right. But they had it in their heart. Is that what it says? They heard it. They heard it. They heard they it. Know it. Right? They know it, but they've they never done it. anything with it, and the devil takes it away. And how does he take it away? Oh, he distracts, distracts them and says, go over things. here. Yeah. Don't go back to that church, or don't don't be friends with that person. Right. Or whatever. Or, he better. or go to church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every Sunday, go to church. Yeah. Because you're a good person. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go to your Sunday school class. Great. <clears throat> Feels good, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. Fulfilled my commitment now. <sighs> right. I get to do whatever I want to do. And some of these aren't just doing mm -hmm. that, but then they're they're also, I mean, that was the thing with Matthew. It's uh, They were leaders. Beyond that, they were doing leaders. miracles in his name. They were healing people. Right. They were. Right. They how did that happen? They were on the planet. They could chase a rabbit. <laughs> how, can, how can people heal in Jesus' name and not be saved? Hmm. They're not healed in Jesus. They're not name. actually healing in Jesus' name. They're just yeah, saying the that they are. How powerful is Jesus' name? Oh, well. All powerful. All powerful. It is who he is. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
period. Could false prophets um, cast out demons in Jesus' name? They said it. Said well, so. They did. They did. Yeah. They did. Don't but you they're think false prophets? So how can that happen? Satan mocks mm -hmm. in yes. them so that they look like exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They say the same words. We have to remember what Jesus' quoted. name is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is all encompassing of who he is. Mm -hmm. And if a demon is cast out in Jesus' name, he must get out. Right. Because greater mm -hmm. is Jesus mm -hmm. than that. No matter Period. who says it. Mm -hmm. No matter the motive. Mm -hmm. No matter the motive. Okay? So false prophets are really good. Didn't the serpent really that Moses mm -hmm. have eat the one yes. that uh -huh. will have? Right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right? You well, know, that's what that's Jody boss. That's it. <laughs> and snakes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A serpent. Uh, how that's big that's were that's snakes that's in Egypt? They were oh, huge. they were worshipped. Yeah. yeah. I know. Why did God pick snakes? <laughs> 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 Why did he pick all those plagues? Because every one of them issued to God. That was a God that they worshipped for darkness, right. for gnats, for cows, for sun rising, for the Nile. Right. Every one of them, he just hacked right <coughs> off. They can, that he's more powerful than every single yeah. one of those gods. Why are we taught that? Well, they, it's not just a plague, it's a plague against a god. Mm -hmm. In the garden, it was a snake. He came on his mm -hmm. belly first, mm -hmm. or after. 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 Yes. Yeah. I hope in your scripture you went to Luke 8, should you have not understood it before. Think about it in the context of, now I get it. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, John 15. The one who abides in Jesus bears much fruit. That fruit proves that he is Christ's disciple. Okay, but what does that mean? Okay, what is fruit in this context? That's what I should say. What is fruit? Love, joy, peace, better. Yeah, I think it's okay. What is what does that verse say? The one who abides in Jesus bears fruit. What is what is bearing the fruit? Having his character. Looking like him. That's it. Abiding. Abiding in Jesus is bearing fruit. That is that perseverance and patience. That is that. What did we learn? Abiding meant in one of some of our previous studies. We had abiding as a big continually. Remain in. Remain, Remain in. in. Constant. Right? Yeah. It was almost too tabernacle. Mm -hmm. If, and again, if you say the word tabernacle, where does your mind go? Mm. Moses. 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 Exodus. And his right. House. Right. And, and where was the tabernacle among the uh, Jewish people? In the middle. In the middle. Always in the middle. Always in the middle. Surrounded by the tribes. Mm -hmm. tribes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're supposed to abide mm -hmm. in Christ, because that bears much fruit. Mm -hmm. If you abide, then that character is going to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, Romans mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. the law. <laughs> yeah. Say that again. It's like it was talking about the law. The, the law. law. Death. The law. Death. Explain that. How does the, because God told him to do the law all through the Old Testament. The law bears yeah. fruit for death because the law cannot save. That's yeah. it. So yeah. it's death. Right. So it's death. It's death. We have rules to live by, but that does not save us. Right. right. We can be the best person. So why do it? Why do I have to be all that good stuff when it doesn't save me anyways? But that's also, I think, bearing that fruit. We're becoming like Christ. You're being... Uh, okay. Well, well, if you're saved, you don't have to do it. You want to do it. There's the motivation yeah. because of the abiding. Okay. So if you said, well, what about all those Old Testament people? They did the law. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. Are they in hell? That's exactly what they were supposed to do. That's exactly what they were supposed to do. Why? Because that kept them abiding in God. It was it was a light to this is what God requires of you. This doesn't save you, but yes. this is what God requires of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be obedient Looking beyond. to what I require? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because with sin, when someone sins, what hap what has happened? Sacrifice. 
right. Blood had to be shed. Yeah. Blood had to be shed. But that didn't save him. No. no. <coughs> it covered. It covered it. That sin. Right. Only one. But, but those who believed what God said, right. therefore had it. faith in what God said, that was their saving That's faith. the saving. Yeah. That is the why <coughs> they did what they did. Mm -hmm. In faith believing there was a coming mm -hmm. Messiah mm -hmm. that we're not going to have to do this anymore. So instead of Judaizers bringing in the law, mm -hmm. let's add, 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 they should be going, thank God, we don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Grace because has come. Grace yeah. So why hang on to that? Because it's a comfort, it factor. Factor. It's a comfort factor. Yeah. I did, 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 did. Because, yeah, you have your little chart and you can measure it out and see how you're traveling along. Okay? We go to church to check. They brought sacrifices. <coughs> check. Okay, that was their check. Ours right. is good works, kind of, sort of. Check. You know, way easier. Good Just works. doing good works does not mean you have a relationship. No. no. I kind of look at it like being in the. Been a coach and you know <clears throat> used to coach receivers. You know guys who catch the passes. You have so many steps you take. You plant this foot. You, right. You cut. You do this. You do this. Do this. They haven't caught a pass until they run the route. They've done the preparation, but you haven't caught the pass until the until you literally catch the ball and receive it. That's why you call them receivers. <clears throat> and they have to be thrown properly. Yep. Mm -hmm. To be able to receive it, it has to be thrown, and then sometimes you might have to jump. True. Do all <laughs> kind of contortions to catch it, but yeah, right. until you do the preparation, <laughs> and the law was preparing them, convicting them of the sin, to when Jesus came, yes. they could receive it. In it. That's the message that should have been preached and preached and preached every time when they yeah. brought their sacrifice. One day in yeah. Jerusalem, we will not have to do this. Only a few. One day in Jerusalem, we will not have to kill. Mm -hmm. what, I, don't, I don't know if they did it. I wasn't there. Yeah. It doesn't record in Scripture that they did it. I know. But it should have been done. I wonder if it was. I do. I do. What more of a lesson for us. Right. Well, it had to be somewhat, right? If, um, what's her name? I can't think. The people waiting for Christ. The ones that didn't die until they saw... Ananias was one of them, oh, and Anna. 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 That's right. right. You know what I mean? I so something. Somehow they knew. Nicodemus knew. Yeah. So yeah. right. So something. We already talked about the fruit of the spirit, like right. Shannon said. That's character. This is why we do what we do. Okay. This is why um, we can persevere with patience through the peeling of the orange because it hurts. I don't like it. However, what's underneath I really <coughs> like. Um, just to put that again, uh, how many things can be made <laughs> out of this? I mean, there's a wonderful orange cake. I love to make mm -hmm. that. But the prettiest thing on the orange cake is the slices of the orange all around the top and the flecks of uh, brine in the the frosting and the orange juice in the cake. Okay, this you can't get a visual of that, so you'll have to try to make yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't even threaten. Don't, don't even. I don't even need an excuse to make that cake. Your mama's ambrosia. Would be good. Oh, uh -huh. yes, that right. <laughs> and the oils extracted to polish the wood of the table. That you oh, see yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can just I can't. Can you not even think of it's. You'll think of some and you'll write them down, you know, those are all the uses for the orange. And then, no, not of another one. God oh, I thought of another one. The fragrance can help with nausea. Well, then actually, fragrance can help with nausea. And even from the tree, the, the, the wood of the tree mm -hmm. was used for things, too. And think mm -hmm. about without the tree and without being attached to the branch, there mm -hmm. is no That's orange. The orange. Mm -hmm. the, have you ever tried to dig up an orange tree? Oh, oh goodness. I hope you never have That's to do that in your lifetime. It is not fun. Yeah. A tree that can grow in sandy soil has got to be a little bit. Right? <laughs> this is not trees that get blown down in a hurricane. That's great. I'm enjoying all your no orange knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> kids, so I'm sitting here like, I think fruit, and I'm thinking You like, can tell the Florida kids versus the not Florida kids. Citrus. Citrus is everything. 
Um, Ephesians 5, we said, walk as children of the light. Now, did that make you go to Colossians? Because I really hope it did. The word light, capitalized light. L. Yeah. Okay? Because I'm like, wait. <laughs> That's, wait, where is that? That's in verse 12. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I put Ephesians 5.9 there because I was like, oh. Because we're children of the light. And verse 12 said, we're inheritance of the saints and light. Wow. Be filled. What's fruit here? Christ, right. Righteousness. Christ. What is righteousness? Christ. In Christ. In, see, these are all Christianese words. So you get an A for class. Imputed <laughs> righteousness. You go out in the world and you say righteousness has been imputed upon me, and they look at you like, "What cult are you in?" <laughs> You're an alien. <laughs> right? They say, "I'm sorry, does that hurt?" <laughs> okay. But this is reality for us. This this fruit of righteousness. When I'm doing what is right in God's eyes, I'm bearing fruit. Never me. <coughs> I am so full of fruit, I have anxiety. <laughs> I thought I was lacking. <coughs> and I'm not. This has just been a freeing lesson for me because that That's my great. fruit idea was way whacked out. Yeah. So and I didn't even know it. So you've been doing a happy dance? Absolutely. Yes. A reproof happy dance. Right? I don't like this verse. <laughs> because it says, discipline for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Have you ever been to the gym? <laughs> be not joyous. Right? Yet to those who have been trained by it. Trained by what? Discipline trains you. Training has to be in discipline. Afterward, it yields the, what kind of fruit? Good. Peaceful. Peaceful, Peaceful. Yeah. fruit of righteousness. So righteousness can mean that you are peaceful in a tough situation. Or you can bring peace into a tough situation. Brian Ward actually had a whole disciple now on this verse, and he made us do obstacle courses and workouts and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Brian would have. We all hated him. Brian would have, yes. <laughs> he, we all hated him for the moment. But then it was... Good lesson. It is. Understood. And then you feel yeah. so accomplished. Yeah. Look what, I, look what I did. Okay? Discipline brings about discipline. You have been disciplined to get into the Word. For me, the fruit, I have correct knowledge of what fruit is now. I didn't have that before. Didn't even know that I didn't have that before. Mm -hmm. I thought I was right, but I was wrong. And we even didn't did even the know fruit it. study. What, the, what that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this proves I'm just like you. No, but this wasn't covered in that. <laughs> That's a good point. Stop. I thought. <laughs> marvel at, at what um, God can do. Right? Yeah. And that the word is just, just marvel. It opens up a different part of the word. It's just it's just amazing. Oh, maybe it was gifts. Um, um, oh, spiritual gifts. Uh, maybe it was spiritual gifts. Yeah, <laughs> 1318 of Hebrews, through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, fruit of our lips. So now fruit is thankfulness. <laughs> Have you ever been a thankful person? Yes. A grateful person? Yes. Have you ever been an unthankful person mm -hmm. and never can be satisfied mm -hmm. ever? And it's just, mm -hmm. I can never please this person. Mm -hmm. Do you like to be around them? Mm -hmm. No. <coughs> No, they are usually a friend unto themselves. Mm -hmm. Because and they're in constant struggle. Yeah, they oh are. Oh my goodness. And, and they bring that struggle with them kind yeah, of they like do. um yes. who's the guy with the dust and the Charlie Brown? Oh, yeah. Pigpen. Pig yeah. yeah. Pig yeah. Just like Pigpen. Oh, but he's a cute kid. He's just putting it around him. I would rather the thankfulness. Okay? Not a Pollyanna. Of everything is so good all the time. No, this is a reality of but we can be thankful reality. in everything. And it has to be expressed. Because people go, oh, yes, I'm very grateful. I'm thankful. Right? Yeah. God's so good to me. <laughs> and no, this says Inform your it's face. the fruit of our lips. Right. The sacrifice of our praise. It needs to be when said. we're giving you have to say it and right. express it. Right. No matter how crazy it sounds. 
no matter how Amen. crazy it is. Okay? <laughs> James 3. <clears throat> What's fruit here? God's wisdom. God's wisdom is full of good fruits. So he takes the foolishness of the world to confound the wise because he's wise. Let's see. The disciples started out as what? Right. Fishermen. Look who the transformation of the power of God. I also look at myself. Like, who would pick that? Why? Why? Do you know how bad I am at blank, 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 blank? Why would... Because that's his wisdom. And that pleases him. And then when I do his will and fill myself with his wisdom, that is a good fruit. Now, um, increasing. The second part of that one, in the, the James one, oh, says, yes. a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Yep. It gave me the mental picture of the fact that your fruit's hanging there and people have to pluck it. You know oh. that like, it's not shoving fruit down people's throat. It's not, oh. you know, forcing it on somebody else. It's right. you're growing the peace and people, I mean, we're supposed to have the fruit and we're supposed to offer the fruit, but it's two way. They have to also take it, take and it's it. sown in peace, not in strife. And this was hanging and out and on the side of uh, my mother's road, on the t road to her house, and I passed it for the past. You passed it. I passed it for the, about the past uh, month and a half, mm -hmm. hanging there, just hanging there. Mm -hmm. So I just rolled up, and I thought, I wonder if it's ready. Uh, more knowledge. It's hanging. You just bend it like that, and it came right out. You'll pull it, because it'll never come out. No. You have to bend it, off it came. I'm like, oh, it's right, it's ready to go. Huh. But I'm so you're going to break that open and pass it around, right? Sure. <laughs> 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 and I did get started. It's I nice for everything. <laughs> what happens when you break that? What happens all over your fingers? <laughs> you, get, uh, you get a little messy. Yeah. You get a little messy. <laughs> <laughs> little messy. <laughs> you got to be willing to get messy. Just <laughs> take that as you will. Yep. Yeah. you got to be willing to get messy because fruit's messy. No, I'm not quite sure I even know a, mess, a fruit that's not messy unless you get a banana, but you still get feeling from the peeling that you have to go wash your hands. still get messy. still messy. You guys have to have sensory issues. Sensory issues. I love it. I like it to get dirty. But. Oh, greeniness. Okay. Uh, 10. Uh, we are increasing in the knowledge of God. So see, do we ever get there? Oh, keep it tiny. Keep working. Keep, 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 yeah. keep, keep, and keep, keep, keep. That is free. It's That's like persevering. Because we're in this world. Because we're in this world. So I don't know about you guys, but I have to relearn what I thought I knew. Because, you know, I did that course check. And I forgot. i got to go relearn that. Growth takes place as one's mind is renewed. Now, what happens if I wouldn't have let go of that bearing fruit is bringing people to Christ? That's what fruit is. There would have been no growth. There would have been no growth, and the knowledge would have been wasted because there was no wisdom with understanding. Mm -hmm. And you'd have felt defeated and discouraged right. and tempted right. to go, why do I bother? Mm -hmm. Yep, but you, your hands. You never, know what, <coughs> you never know what your testimony will bring others to Christ, and you, you're not aware of it. And you don't even know. Because... Mm -hmm. God does the bringing. Right. And that's your and the spirit and is the, and right? And so you still are bearing fruit that you didn't even know. By doing all that. Exactly. That's true. Right. That is true. Jenny, the, in Bible Study Fellowship, I'll never forget this illustration about uh, the great Mississippi River. Uh-huh. And it, that was more specifically about winning people to Christ, but it also can be fruits. Uh, it begins as a mere trickle, it does. but then look how it increases. So you may just be the trickle, and somebody, somebody else. Holy Spirit's the. So the so true. I'm close. You looked up power. Okay, I'm what what words do you see in dunamis? She'll get it then. <laughs> um, like dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> you tried to die. <laughs> I did. Yeah. To be able inherent power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Because it is power. <laughs> right? So what's residing in me? Because I'm the thing. 
Oh, Whose power? Comes through God's power. power. What's the nature of his power? Awesome. He rose Jesus from the dead. Yeah, it's a song. Okay. Power in the blood. Right? <laughs> the power is God's might. Okay, because might is there. Working within me. Ephesians 1 said God's power surpasses greatness. Ah. <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> That's what's in me. How come I don't feel it? Yeah. Right? You do at times. I do at times, especially when you go, well, that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Or those words came out of my mouth in that attitude. That wasn't me. That's God's power and might, right? Working within. Uh, Ephesians 1. A miracle in itself. Uh, that is a miracle in itself. Yeah, it, this again. power is a miracle in itself. And that is that spiritual realm that we live in or are to be living in. And I, I almost feel sorry. I do feel sorry for people that do not know Christ because their, their realm is just so tiny. When it's all this. Okay, Ephesians 1, God's power is past grace. The power that raised Christ from the dead. Mm -hmm. That's the same power toward believers. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I wish I could just <coughs> grab a hold of it. Verse 11. Strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience. Joyously. Patience, joy, right? What right. Is the, and it says, "What is the power there for?" Yeah, for power, well, steadfastness, right, yeah. and patience, Attaining. but also giving thanks to the Father. Mm -hmm. he, he did it. Right? It's not my Do we know what the? Uh, okay, I kind of know what the Father did for me, but I don't really know. Mm. I, don't, I don't really know, and I won't really know until I get to heaven. Mm -hmm what he really, really, really did. Um, because my mind can't comprehend it. It's, it's too vast and too wonderful. Um, I have joy in that God qualified me. What are the Gnostics going to do with that? You can't be qualified. You can't be qualified. What are the Judaizers going to do? You have to do this, this, and this. You're not there yet. qualified. Well, you're not Tell part of the tribe. tribe you're, from. Yeah. <laughs> you're not of the lineage. Well, I can't decide who my mother is. Nor could you. Can't describe what for you. So, just fate qualified you because you're a Jew? Mm -hmm. That's not what qualifies you. We looked up saints. Now, I, I think we knew about this, that we're set apart, um, sanctified. Yeah. But remember that you're set apart part from a common use to a sacred use. So everything you do is to exude Christ, mm -hmm. to point to Christ, <laughs> the way you do things, the why you do things. What page is that on? Um, 23. Thank you. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Woo! I like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> participation. I do. <laughs> Um, verse 13, for giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So what did you do? I accepted and believed and repented. I didn't grow it. I, didn't, I love it. I love it. But I didn't grow it. I didn't put the flower on the tree. And I'm not the tree. I'm not even the root that goes down to get the nourishment to send it to the branch so that we could even have a little fruit. That's not me. But I sure like the fruit. I enjoy the fruit. I benefit from the fruit. That's a lot of thankfulness. There's a lot of joy in that. Rejoicing in others' gifts and how they do this well and they do this well. Boy, you like to be in those people's presence because you're always built up. Uh, saints in light. And then we had 13 and 14. Here's what he did. He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption. So what's redemption? That's another Christianese word. It says the forgiveness of sins. 
the price has been paid. The price has been paid. I have forgiveness of sins, so I've been blood redeemed blood back. Blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am no longer in dark, a transfer, okay? Um, I did look up transfer, now I don't remember where I put it. Hmm, I'll find that. Is this right there? Uh, that was a good word. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Romans 1, call the beloved of God. That's a saint. 1 Corinthians 1, a saint is sanctified and chosen. Okay? Uh, what you get in 1 Corinthians 6. Call the Call washed, not many. Sanctified, washed, justified. Sanctified, justified. We're no longer, and then there goes that whole list. Oh, sweet face. Right? I don't want to be any of that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm no longer that. Can I say, but I never was that? No, you can't. I can't say that. I can't no. say that. I can't, say that. I, can't, I can't, because I was born that anyway. way. Yeah. 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 Though, there, see, I told you I had it. Transfer. <laughs> <laughs> to change its place. Mm -hmm. So I just moved it. Did it move itself? No. Can it move itself? No. It can't. It's an inanimate object. But I moved it. Can I keep moving it? Mm -hmm. sure. If I want to. Okay. Can I pick it? I can. Or I can just leave it on the tree. Let it rot. And let it rot. Okay? It's only used five times in all of scripture. Transfer. It's only used five times. It is used of God removing Saul by death and setting up David. <coughs> who decides when who dies? Who dies? God does. <coughs> Was David this um, fruit that everybody went, he needs to be king? <laughs> His dad forgot about him in the field. Right. Don't you have another son? Because, you know, Sam was going, God didn't, he's not, none of these are it. Right. But he told me, you, it's your son. Well, I got one kid. Right. That kid. He's got to cure the sheep. Right. Yeah. What do you want from him? Because he was a sissy one. He was a right. He was that. This is what she really kid. wasn't. <laughs> well, I thought if you're a shepherd, you got to cut off lions. Yeah, you're not sissy. No. Acts 26, 18, we went to twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have been transferred from Satan's power to God. Not just put it on the table, but it's in order to receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance. Okay? Ephesians 2 told us we walked. We used to walk like this. Well, don't you know people that still walk like this? Well, they're in the world. They're supposed to walk like that. I shouldn't expect anything else from right. them. That's, that's, how they, that's how they walk. That's how I used to walk. Before, okay, I partook. We were by nature children of wrath, dead in sins, transgressions, and lust. But <coughs> I, someday I would like to go all the way through Scripture and mark but God. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God. But God. That list would go on. Forever. Forever. <laughs> what did he do? The transformation of Paul, Saul. Right? Before, before Christ? Nobody could ever question. Oh, he was a persecutor. After Christ, he's called a rescuer. And a minister of the And a gospel. minister. Called by God. Now, wow. what did God do? Made us alive. Made us alive in Christ. Uh -huh. Raised us up with Raised Christ. us up with Him. He didn't only make us alive, but He raised us up. Seated mm -hmm. us with Christ in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And made us co heirs. Yeah. yeah. So we're not enemies anymore. Right. We're not aliens anymore. We're, and how come I know that I really do get an inheritance? Um, well, we should be right hand of God with Him. Right? Uh, as far as God's concerned, I'm already seated there. Right. Yeah, you're seated. Okay. Place. What's my guarantee? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. my guarantee. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's all my inheritance. <laughs> that was cool. Mm -hmm. Did you get a list? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had eternal life. Uh, the kingdom of God is prepared mm -hmm. for me. Right. From how long? 
Sometimes I read Acts 26 and I'm like, um, there's inheritance in there? Yes. Paul's ministry was to open the eyes and turn people from darkness to light, which in turn gave them an inheritance. Okay? Romans 8 says we are children of God. But, you know, you'll hear that a lot. Everybody's a child of God. No. Everybody's made in the image of God. But everybody's not a child of God. That takes a decision, okay? Uh, again, we can correct that statement in love if it's appropriate, if it's an appropriate time to say that. And they can say, but we're all made in the, in the image of God. <coughs> yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And he wants to spend eternity with that chosen part of what he created. Yes. Man, in his yes. image. And that one that chooses him. him. Okay? It is a choice. See, so he sends out the choice. invitation. It is yeah. a choice. And again, parable after parable after parable. He's telling you. Um, because of Christ, I am an heir of all things. And I'm so glad it's kept in heaven. Because <laughs> down here, let's just say things eat it. Yeah. Sun burns it. Yeah. Um, it's perishable. And it's protected. And it's protected. By the power of God. Right. Kept in heaven. Kept in heaven. Um, Jesus in Colossians. Did you go there? This was a magnificent list. Um, let's just go to verses 13 to 20. Um, first of all, he's God's beloved son. Okay? Then we go into um, verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn is a huge uh, key word. <clears throat> the firstborn of all creation. By him all things were created, both in heavens and on earth, visible, invisible, for, whether forces or domains, rulers, or sorry, dominions, or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Mm -hmm. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Now, if you want to know who Christ is, again, we can take him to Second Peter, and we can take him to Colossians. Uh, he is redemption and forgiveness is in him. He is God. Here's another reference that he is God. He is the image of the invisible God. So now what are you if that resides in you? I become the image. That is a big responsibility. That is a huge responsibility that I don't always want. In fact, most times I don't want it. Firstborn of all creation, firstborn from the dead. He is creator timeless. Before all things, the essence of all things. He's first place in everything. It pleased the Father to make all fullness in him. The purpose of Colossians could be to present every man complete, mature in Christ. Or it could be that, what was that other verse? Uh, that we walk in verse 9. Ten. Verse 10. And to walk in the manner yes, in that walk, walk yes. Bearing fruit. Right. Since we talk so much about fruit. Right? Right? And that would be I, I hope I put <coughs> fruit in my team. Maybe that's maybe that's for the next one. That's what I put for my um, theme. For my on um, Colossians one. Right. To walk in a manner worthy. That's what I, I did. I did too. Okay. I should have put fruit in there somewhere. Yeah. Maybe walk in a manner worthy bearing fruit. Yeah, and I'm saying the word like of that. truth and the gospel. <coughs> right. That's you. That's you. Um, <coughs> Christ reconciled all things to the Father. Mm -hmm. Now we got to remember that chapter 1 presents Christ as God. Mm -hmm. right. So man with a flesh and blood body. Why does Paul do that? Because <laughs> the Gnostics say, 
No, he's just a fist. Okay, uh, and what Jesus did... Ooh, I ran out of time. Sorry. Um, just read those real quick. 21 and 22. Those hostile in mind, alienated, engaged in doing evil deeds, that's what we were, are now reconciled to God. <coughs> now they're holy. Now they're blameless. Now they're beyond reproach. But there is a condition. If, indeed, you continue in the faith. I never heard that. Once and done. Not once and done. If you continue in the faith, firmly established, stable, steadfast, and you're not moved away, shifting from hope. Okay? Here's Paul's message. He knows he's a minister of the gospel. He knows he's a minister of the church. Even though he hasn't seen these people, he still has authority over them. Because who called him? Christ. Christ called him. Nobody's going to be arguing about that. Face to face. The face to face. Okay? Blinded him. Mm. A preacher to fully carry out the word of God, which was the mystery revealed to him. He's a Pharisee. Yeah. You know anything about the church? Yeah. The church? No. We don't have church. These people need to be killed because they are ruining the synagogue. They are going totally against the law. And he was totally turned around. He, he was told the mystery is Christ in you. The hope of glory. This again, this is not a hope. I hope it happens. This is a certainty. Why? So every man is presented complete. Mature in Christ. Okay? By God's power and Paul's labor to fulfill his ministry from God for others. He knew what his ministry was. He knew what his job was. Did it really well. He had a uh, enthusiasm and a zeal. Um, <coughs> always, time, 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 time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only way God got him to stop was put him in prison. Mm -hmm. Now right. <laughs> hey, now go be zealous. <laughs> now right. <laughs> right? Okay. He he knew his purpose in life. Um, purpose of this orange is to nourish, to provide enjoyment, but it has to be peeled in order for that to happen. <laughs> Um, I'm not saying you're an orange, but I am saying you're free. And simply by being saved, you're free. If we can live like that, the world would change. We would change. Our families would change. Um, anything else? What did you get for page 23? As you have seen, knowledge is to be lived out. So... What did you learn from that prayer, and how can you apply it to your life? I hope you filled that one out. Anybody want to share that one? Because that was personal. <laughs> My growing and learning in the faith is essential to standing firm in the faith. Hmm. I think the more you know, and the more you know who he is, the easier it is. It is. And the more trust you want to know. So. And the more you want to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true, too. That is very true. I also looked at Paul and his responsibilities, but he, too, said, would you all pray for me? Right. Yeah. You know, I, I am giving you what God says, but... I'm a, I'm a sinner saved by grace, mm -hmm. too. Right, right. And, and he knew who he was. And, mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to carry around that I persecuted and killed Christians. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have to carry that around. He did. Yeah. But he did. oh, to receive an encouraging letter like that, or a text. And to have somebody. brothers and sisters come alongside him. Yeah, or an emoji. You know, just right. sometimes <laughs> those things are encouraging. They are, because it's yeah. like, hey, she just thought of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Encourage one, one another. One of the things about this prayer is that it's the same for me as it was for them. It is. It never changes. It never changes. I, I, I kind of want to type this out and mm -hmm. just, this is, and every time you open your word, this is, who are you going to pray that for today? Mm -hmm. Could be me. 
Yeah. You know, I could pray this for myself today. Or mm -hmm. who's the Lord put on your heart that you want to pray this for today? Mm -hmm. Wow. Whoever it is, they will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Boy, will they be blessed. Because well, you're doing God's will. And well, bearing fruit. One of the things for us as believers is not to limit the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And don't forget that, even though you might not be hearing it from the pulpit, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only their job. <clears throat> right. Okay, give you like a couple minutes and I'm going to support the video. Thank you. Hey, do I, do I owe you money, Donna? You do? I can't remember. I don't know, do you? For some reason.